welcome back to the channel or if you're new here welcome officially to the channel this is as you know from the intro series where i go into odd game accessories or peripherals that developers made to either get us more into the game mentally or physically today well this one probably not as much but before i spoil too much let's take a look at one of atari's crazier ideas and well if you know atari that's saying something special let's take a look at the mind link Imagine, if you will, a company willing to attempt anything to make you buy a new accessory. Beyond the realm of sight and sound lies the Atari Zone. Do 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 do. Sorry, I couldn't resist. The year is 1984. The company, Atari, once again pushing the boundaries of what the aging Atari 2600 was actually meant to do. Help you control video games with your mind. That's right folks, Atari was working on mind control in the 80s, and almost no one knew about it. So I know you're dying to know, why have you never heard of this thing, how did it work, and were there any games of note for it? Trust me, we're going to get into all of those, but let's start with how this thing worked. Okay, I hate to break it to you, but this wasn't exactly mind control. You weren't making things fly through the air or flipping switches with your mind, you were really just wiggling your eyebrows which you likely did just now, didn't you? This device used a series of infrared sensors to read movement on your forehead while playing a game. It would then interpret those signals into movements on the game screen. So basically, this was a controller designed for the rock. As you might suspect, since it used infrared technology and fell into many, okay, pretty much all of the limitations therein of infrared technology being slow, unreliable, with inaccurate movements due to the nature of the control scheme. It also had another side effect. It gave people headaches. Yeah, uh, apparently moving your eyebrows around during intense bouts of play tended to cause people no end of headaches, which obviously wasn't a resounding endorsement for the controller itself. Ironically, by the time they found this out, they actually had three or more games in development for the system. Bionic Breakthrough, which was essentially a clone of Breakout only built around this specific controller. Telepathy, which had players navigating through a series of challenges using a character with two antennae sticking out of their heads. The last game was a game called Mind Maze. This one claimed to use extrasensory perception, or ESP for short, to predict players' choices. The game challenged players to choose one of several cards on the screen and then it would predict what card they selected. Think hard. What is it? Circle. Close. But definitely wrong. In the end, given the difficulties of accurately measuring how to move something using the IR sensors on the headband, the headaches, along with the dizziness, yeah, I forgot to mention it was making people dizzy as well. This would just be enough to normally cause the device just to stop. Just stop the whole project. However, in a rather funny and ironic note, the device actually even fell off and broke while being demonstrated by an executive at one of the game shows that Atari was attending. You also have to remember, this was closing in very close on the video game crash where the market shares were thin, game saturation was high, so funds weren't exactly the most abundant for companies. And while asking $100 to use your eyebrows to control a video game was rather comical in the 1980s. So, it should come as no surprise that this entire project eventually got canned and never got an official release. But what do you guys think of this though? Do you think this is a cool idea, maybe a bit ahead of its time? Do you like that Atari wasn't afraid to innovate even in something as crazy as this? Let me know in the comments. For now though, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. If you could, please hit the like button, and if you're not, consider subscribing, it really helps me out. But for now, have a great rest of your day, and until next time... This is Peter Beckman saying... <laughs> See you then.